What is up you guys? For today's video, I'm going to share with you guys how to get this really fun dark green smoky eye that is kind of more so on the grunge style. I really like how it turned out. But today we use the So Jaded Pal from ColourPop. It, oh, I haven't used this one in a hot minute on my channel. And I actually think I've only used it maybe once on my YouTube channel. Normally I have been using this palette over on my Instagram page. And if you'd like to follow me over on there, it is at lethal underscore kit. And I'll have it linked in the description box down below for you. So in today's video, I did things a little bit different and I kind of did a shot my stash. So what I did is went into my collection that I have right now and I grabbed things I either haven't really used all that much, things that used to be my favorite back in the day, as well as grabbing new favorites of mine and just kind of like putting them all together and doing a look with them. And trust me, like this video has been a roller coaster and you will definitely want to watch the foundation part because ooh, like she was rough. However, before we jump into this roller coaster of a video, if you haven't already, I would really appreciate if you hit the subscribe button down below and give this video a like. And again, if you'd like to follow me on Instagram, my Instagram account is at lethal underscore kit where I post a bunch of tutorials over on there if you're looking for some inspiration. As always, the first thing that we are going to be doing before we jump into using the palette is priming our eyelids. And again, I'm going to be going in with my favorite from Anastasia Beverly Hills. So the palette that we are going to be using today is the So Jaded one from ColourPop, which is a collaboration with Kathleen Lights here on YouTube. And today I want to do a very like low-key grunge tutorial, you know, something really easy and super beginner friendly because I don't know about you guys, but sometimes I just want to do something really kind of on the simple side, but it doesn't look super simple, if you know what I mean. Like I want to do something that looks like I took a lot of time at it, but I did. And I feel like this palette's going to be perfect for it because there's a lot of grungy colors in it. I feel like this palette's actually a really underrated grunge palette, but like, oh, I just love like all these like earthy colors in it. And also we get a lot of shimmers. So I feel like this palette is the way to go today. Now, I don't know if you guys are like this too, but I always have like the hardest time figuring out which shade I want to go in with first. Like I literally sit and look at my palette for at least like 20 minutes, like trying to figure out like which one I want to go in with. Because I always feel like it's going to make the biggest difference when I know it doesn't. But the first one I think I want to go in with is this really pretty mustardy yellow shade called Citrine. And I'm just going to use this Moda brushes. What is this one? It's called a crease brush. And I'm popping that right into my crease. And then as you can see, I'm doing these like little circle motions to blend that upwards towards my brown. And I'm also using it to round out my outer V. But like, girl, this shade is so pigmented. I always forget how pigmented this palette is because I mean, I use it frequently, but I don't use it like every single day. So I kind of forget about it sometimes. But like, this shade is stunning. It's kind of like a mustard yellow, but it has like this little hint of orange to it almost. It's so once you have that applied and blended out, now we can go in with one of my all-time favorite shades in this palette. Like seriously, I am obsessed with it. And that is this beautiful earthy green shade called Jade. So I'm just going to take Jade on this, I believe it's called a Bretman Rock brush from Wet n Wild. I'm not too sure on the name of it. It's just a crease brush. And I'm applying Jade right in there. And I'm really like pressing my brush into that crease because I want a lot of definition with this look. And then afterwards, I'm just doing these little circles to blend it upwards into citrine, and I'm also using it to round out my outer V. Now listen, when I sat down to plan this look, I had full intentions on going in with this really pretty taupey sparkly shade called Smoky Quartz. Seriously, it is such a gorgeous shadow. But honestly, I think we're going to do something different because every time I have opened up this palette since I sat down, my eye goes directly towards emerald. And I don't know if it's because it has like that beautiful like reflect to it, or maybe it's because it's green, but we're going to go in with that instead. And then using a damp and flat shader brush, I'm going to be applying this right to my lid. And I'm also going slightly above my lid too because my eyes are slightly hooded. And we don't want to make them look any smaller than they already do. I was not expecting it to be that sparkly either. Like I thought it was going to be sparkly, but not this sparkly. So I'm just going to do a second layer of this shadow because I want it like extra, extra sparkly today because that is kind of the vibe we're going for. But man, like that shadow though. Like, I actually kind of kicked myself for not using it more because I love how it looks. It's just one of those shadows that's kind of hard to pair in this palette because, I mean, how many dark blue smoky eyes do you want to do with a green lid, you know what I mean? And I never really thought to pair it with these shades that we use today, but I really wish that I would have because they look absolutely stunning together. We got a lot of follow from the emerald shade, so I'm going to go in with this oil-free eye makeup remover from Target. It's the off-brand to the Neutrogena one. And I'm going to use this like reusable cotton round. I've been trying these out. I don't know how I feel about them because I haven't washed them with like product on them yet. So I'm hoping that they go okay, but I guess I'm going to find out. And I'm just going to take my 
cut around and fold it in half. Let me get up close so you guys can see what I'm doing. But I'm taking that straight edge and I'm going right underneath my eye and then lightly pulling downwards. You do not want to be rough when you do this because otherwise you're going to get some premature wrinkles and who wants that? And you just want to be really gentle with your skin. And then afterwards, you can see I'm taking that um, kind of like straight edge and I'm going right underneath my lower lash line. And then afterwards, I am going upwards as if I was doing wing eyeliner. By doing it this way, you get that really nice harsh line without having to use tape because I hate using tape. I refuse to use tape on my face. I know a lot of people do it. But when you pull it off, you're like tugging at your skin and you're going to get crow's feet and I don't want that. And I find that this even works better because I always do eyes first anyways. And then make sure you get around your nose because if you're anything like me, I always get fallout and it kind of like trickles down from my eyes down to my nose and it looks like blackheads. So we need to get rid of that too. And then for liquid liner today, I'm going to go in with this one from ColourPop. It is called the BFF Liquid Liner in the shade Numero Uno, which is the black one. And nobody ever talks about these liquid liners from ColourPop, but I've used this one now I think like three or four times in it. It really nice and also it is super crazy pigmented. Seriously though, that was probably like the quickest wing liner I have ever done, like hands down. Like, it was like literally just kind of like a swipe swipe and I was already done. Like, I'm like really impressed with that liner though. And then for mascara today, I'm going to try out a new one. This one's from Benefit. It's called Bad Gal Bang. I've never used it before, but I know it's a super hype mascara. But just like real talking it, like the top of this like uh, handle of it feels really, really weird. Let's see the applicator. Ooh. Like, that's something I've never seen before. It's kind of like a cone, but it has like those spiky bristles to it. And it's like those ones that are like a plastic spiky, not like the other ones. I guess let's see how it works. You know, at first I didn't think I was going to like the applicator, but I actually don't mind it. Because it's getting these like weird like small lashes I have in my outer corner. And like most mascaras, they just don't get those like little outer corner lashes. And it always looks so weird if I don't wear falsies because of it. And also, this is like gripping my lashes. It feels really weird. Okay, I really like that mascara. It's like volume, but separation and also like a little bit of length, like exactly what I like my mascaras to do. And it's also not like super crazy volumizing too, where it looks kind of like spidery and chunky. It just makes your lashes look thicker. And then for lashes, I'm just going to go in with these ones from Lash XO. They're in the style Starla. I have been literally obsessed with these lately. So for face primer today, we are going to be going in with one of my new favorites, and that one is from Urban Decay, and this one is called the All Nighter Face Primer. So for foundation today, I'm just going to go in with one I haven't used in a really long time, and that one is from Beauty Blender, and this one is in shade 1.00C, and I'm actually going to use a Beauty Blender with it too. I gotta say, like, I just love the packaging of it. It is so cool and just so different. I actually forgot about how light this foundation is because I'm so used to going like five shades darker than my actual skin tone just because it's so hard for me to find foundations and I know people are going to be like this is too light but it actually isn't like in person like this is actually my color. It's just kind of looking a little weird and also I don't have like bronzer on or anything either so it's going to look a little crazy until we get all that on. Maybe it's because my skin is kind of bad right now but I don't know if I like this foundation anymore like I can see why I haven't really been using it. It makes my skin look like really textured. Like I don't have perfect skin and I feel like if you had perfect skin you'll probably actually like this foundation but since I don't it just I don't know how to explain it like it just doesn't look how I'd want it to. Like, I don't mind looking pale but like the undertone of this one is just really weird. Like I don't know how to explain it but like this foundation like it like picks up from the beauty sponge which is kind of weird because I'm using like an actual beauty blender. But like when I blend it out, it like pulls it upwards. Now I don't know if it's because of like the primer or what it is, but I just, I don't know if I like it anymore. For a while there, I actually really enjoyed it, but maybe it's the primer though, because I'm using a completely different one than what I used to use. And also like, holy shit, I look like I have a mask on right now. Like I literally look like casket ready or something. I don't know. Like I just, I am not vibing with this at all. And mind you, I like looking fair because I am fair, but like, this is on a whole other level. 
I look like Casper the Ghost right now and I don't know if I feel like that because I'm so used to having to compromise my shade for foundation or like what it is or maybe it's just because like my camera is white balancing weird because my face is so light but I'm just going to contour my face using my Fenty Matchstick in Amber and I really want to try out the new one that they have launching with this. Like I think it's like a cream but it's like in a like almost like a blush container. I don't know why I just did this but it looks like I have like four eyes on my head right now. <laughs> it looks so weird. Now I'm going to go really in with this too because we did use a super light foundation. Maybe, you know, honestly, it might look a lot better once we contour and that's just kind of why I'm feeling that way because I'm just so not used to doing my super fair routine anymore. The only reason I don't do my foundation as light anymore is because people used to really like bash me here on YouTube and like people on YouTube can be either like the nicest people or they're like the meanest people. There never is an in-between. Like I am either like the worst person ever to be alive or everybody's really sweet. There's like no in-between. And I'm just gonna be honest like it can really mess you up if you can't handle like people being mean to you. Like, YouTube is just not the place to be. Like, people on here are really mean to me sometimes, which is fine. I mean, you throw yourself out there. I mean, it's gonna happen. But, like, when I first started doing YouTube, like, everybody was really nice. And then some of my videos, like, when they have grown a little bit, like, ooh. Or if I say, like, a bad opinion about a product that somebody really likes the person of, like, ooh. <laughs> That's another one, too. But, I don't know. I don't really care, honestly. It doesn't... Like, sometimes it bothers me, but most of the time, honestly, I just get over it. Life is too short to worry about what other people think about you. And trust me, it took me a long time to realize that. Like, I used to be one of those people that had to be a people pleaser, and sometimes I am still now because I'm just so used to it. But trust me, like, if you're living to please other people, you're not going to be happy. Like, you think that it is going to make you happy because you want the people around you to be happy, because of what you're doing or t what you're doing to try to get them to be happy. You know, it's kind of like when you're younger and you just try to do things to make your parents really happy and then you kind of sit there and you're like, why am I doing this? Because it doesn't make me actually happy. Like, that's what I mean. Like, you have to live for yourself and not other people. Okay, this isn't as bad after I got my contour on. Like, I was overreacting. I am going to say that. Like, it's actually not that bad now that I see you. It just looks really crazy until you get this on because of how light the color is. But I actually don't mind how light it is. Like honestly, like when I look at it, I actually really like it. Let's talk about like what's really on my mind right now and that is when you guys see my older videos and you guys tell me how different I am now than when I was then. And I mean like I completely see it. Even when I look at my videos from like nine months ago, I like really see the difference. And it's not like a like coming out of my shell kind of thing. It's more so like I had to make a lot of like life adjustments because I was so unhappy. And also this foundation's already creasing on me. Like look at that. It's already like ugh, I'm I don't know how I feel about it, honestly. Like if I want to be this pale, I'd rather use my Milani one because that one's really good formulated. And why you guys see such a difference between now and then is because back like about a year ago, I made a huge life decision, like complete life decision. Like I used to work a career job, like a nine to five, and I also did social media. And I decided that I wanted to pursue social media because this is what I'm truly passionate about and what I really enjoy. And you know, like when I think of like my dream job, it isn't, you know, sitting at a desk and doing, you know, what I used to do. It was actually doing this. And Cause like what really was like the breaking point of me like really pursuing it is that I am 24 years old I don't have kids we're not married you know we don't own a home and you know it was like the perfect timing like if I was gonna do it it was like the time I had to do it cuz you know like working a career job we were at like that point like are we gonna buy a home what are we gonna do so instead of doing that we kind of were like oh why don't you go do this and if it doesn't work out you know I already have my um, college degrees so I already have a backup plan if I need it but yeah, so I forgot to say though that I am using the Jeffree Star Cosmetics Concealer. Let me see which one it is. It's C2. I think it's the lightest one that isn't the white one. Because this is literally like the lightest concealer I have in my collection that isn't white. I'm just going to keep it real. I don't think that this concealer is worth it. Like, she is so pricey and I just, this one literally creases on me so bad. I'm just trying to use it up. I don't know about you guys, but like sometimes I buy makeup and then I forget I have it because I like other things I have more. And then I kind of sit there and I'm like, I should probably be using this before it expires. 
this is kind of like one of those products and I know a lot of people like this concealer but I just don't like it like I don't know what it is about it but like it creases really bad on me and mind you like I have dry skin so it doesn't really make sense that it does it also it's just really expensive like I would rather buy shape tape than this for the same price because like per ounce like when you start calculating it like this stuff is not cheap and also if you want a really good affordable concealer definitely recommend checking out the one from ColourPop it's called the pretty fresh one that one's a really nice hydrating one and it has like a medium buildable coverage to it so I'm just gonna go in with a little bit of Laura Mercier because if this powder can't fix my face nothing can because this stuff literally is like the most blurring magic I really like this powder but sometimes it does actually oxidize my face so I have to be like really careful with it with what foundation I use at least and again I'm applying it with my beauty blender my camera really hates this foundation though oh it keeps on like doing like this weird like focus thing right now you know after contouring my face and you know like powdering things like I actually kind of like a lighter foundation and I almost want to start wearing it more it gives like a completely different look I mean we're gonna contour a little bit more than this but you know I'm kind of vibing with it so to help me further contour my face because girl I need it I'm gonna go in with this Koki powder contour palette and what I'm going to do is mix these two lighter ones on a Sigma F10 brush so with this I'm gonna start at the back kind of towards my ear and then go underneath my cheekbone But like seriously, like this palette literally blends like butter. Like it actually surprises me. A lot of the products that I really like, a lot of people don't talk about. And I don't know if it's because of like sponsorships or like what, but like this one, case in point, I've never seen anybody talk about it. And it's really, really nice. And I'm one of those people I'm really picky on my contour because I'm so fair. And a lot of them, they either make me look like an Oompa Loompa or they make me look casket ready. Like it's either one or the other. And this one is just like right in between. Like it gives you like this little hint of warmth, but it also contours at the same time. This tutorial today has literally been a roller coaster. You know, it's kind of been going like this a little bit. But for lips today, we are going to be going in with this liquid lipstick from KVD Vegan Beauty, and it's in the shade Sanctuary. Okay, but real talk though, like this liquid lipstick color is so gorgeous. But now we're going to start working on the lower lash line just to tie everything together and just get this look all nice and completed. And what I'm going to do is go back in with that shade that we used earlier called Jade wherever she is. There she is. So I'm just going to take Jade on this little dose of colors brush. And I believe I got this brush in the Sassy Sienna's palette and I really like it. I hope that you can get it individually because I would love like 20 of these because it works so good for the lower lash line. And I'm just doing a back and forth motion. And then for the inner corner highlight today, we are going to be going in with the lightest shimmer in this palette called Pearl. So using this little motor brush's little pencil brush, I am going to be packing the shit out of this into my inner corner. And I'm also bringing it underneath the inner tear duct area to open up the eye. Ooh. I don't remember it being like that. I was actually kind of expecting it to be a little bit lighter. You know, like when I think of this shade Pearl, I think of like an almost white shimmer, whereas this one's kind of like a lighter gold. So for blush today, we are going to be going in with one of my all-time favorites, and that is from Benefit in the shade Dandelion. Like seriously, this blush is really pretty. Like I don't see a lot of people talk about it, but like, ooh, like that color though. So then using this Sigma, what are you called, an F15 dual fiber powder brush, I'm going to apply it right to the apple of my cheek and then stipple it on my cheekbone. What I like about this blush though is that it's a buildable one so if you don't want like a crazy amount of blush but you want like a little hint of it you can do it with this one and also if you want like that full on like e-girl look you can do it too. And then last but not least for highlight today we are going to be going in with one of my absolute favorites and this is again from Benefit in the shade Cookie. Like seriously this highlight is super super blinding. And I'm gonna go in with this Highlight and Globe brush from Moda Brushes. I'm going to apply it right on my cheekbone. But that glow though. I love this highlight. Like if you like something that's really blinding but not glittery, you need to check this one out. Because it gives you like that wet kind of sheen, but it also kind of has like a little bit more pizzazz to it. But yeah, so here's 
here's the finished look. It is very green and very smoky, which you guys know is definitely one of my favorite types of looks to do on my channel. I don't know. I actually really enjoy how it turned out. I mean, like, don't get me wrong, though. Like, this video has been a roller coaster and a half. Like, we've had our ups and downs a little bit. But at the end of the day, I think it actually turned out. I really love this lipstick color. Like, she is stunning. And I also really enjoy, like, the eye look. It's super green and super pretty. And also, it kind of makes me want to start trying out more lighter foundations. I know it looks like we were cast for the ghost for a second, but after we got, like, the contour on and, like, the full face, I actually really enjoy it. And it kind of makes me want to try out different lighter foundations in my collection. Let me know in the comments down below what you think about this look and also let me know if you'd like to see more looks either using the So Jaded palette or if we should do more videos where we just kind of like grab things out of my collection, you know, whether it was like an old favorite of mine, new items I haven't tried out yet, and just kind of like mix them all together and see what happens because I think that's kind of fun with doing videos too. But anyways, if you haven't already, I would really appreciate if you hit the subscribe button down below and gave this video a like. And also, if you'd like to check me out on Instagram, my Instagram account is at lethal underscore kitten. I'll talk to you guys later. Bye!